This video examines some phenomenon that we can observe on Earth with uh, the explanations provided by the conventional model of physics and cosmology. We've got the moon at one-sixth the size of the Earth and we have the moon affecting the tide supposedly because of the gravity of the moon exerting force on the oceans. So why is it that the opposite side of where the moon is even has a high tide? Then I got to thinking, well the ocean weighs quite a bit and the gravitational attraction of the moon supposedly is strong enough to lift the oceans in the movement of the tides. And we've got all kinds of measuring devices for gravity. We call them scales. We have them from 30,000 pounds for vehicles all the way down to 1.7 times 10 to the negative 24th power of grams to measure protons. With all of these scales and all the sensitivity, we don't have a single device that requires moon calibration. So assuming it's true that the moon exerts some gravitational force, at least enough to lift oceans, why don't we have to account for it? Why is there never a change in weight depending on where the moon's location is? Combine this question with the fact that the sun also exerts enough force to keep the earth in orbit under the conventional model and also affect the tides and sometimes they act in concert together to produce the strongest or the highest high tide. This puts a real question into the believability of the conventional sun model, the thermonuclear gravitational sun, and we've had occasion to question whether or not this model works at all. Here's a brief clip from that video. So the the result, the conclusion of that paper, and of anybody else who studied it, is that any particle that has mass, anything that has mass, is not going to be able to move through the density and the distance that the sun's radius is. By trying to escape this problem and provide a solution for it, they've put themselves in another problem. Neutrinos come from the center of the sun, supposedly, where the furnace is, and if they now attribute mass to it in order to get it to have that oscillation property, now the neutrino faces the same problem as any mass particle, massive particle. That is, it can't escape the sun. You can't have it both ways. As it stands, it's not even a viable theory. These questions are serious enough to have prompted even conventional scientists to try to find another explanation beyond gravity why it is that we have tides and some of the effects on Earth that we see. One of them, for example, that you're seeing here is that uh, it's caused by a mechanical force, the spinning of the Earth. And this sort of exemplifies the problem. We parse these questions down to such detail that we forget about what's going on on the whole. The explanation that it's a spinning macro body flies in the face of an explanation for the other question posed in the Newtonian physics video. Why is it that when we're on one place or the other on Earth, we're not flying off of it or weighing less or more as a result of the mechanical action? So, you know, these, these questions together give real pause in believing the model that's that's put out conventionally and uh, I think everybody has a reason to question it